Hello everybody, this is Chris Gorgeous from ASL Basics. Last week I posted a video of myself and my family going to the Fresno Chaffee Zoo and we walked around and we uh, showed you how to sign 17 different uh, zoo animals it's like uh, elephant, giraffe, lion, uh, cheetah and I thought it was a lot of fun and while we were there we actually came across somebody that works there that knows sign language. So since we were already there on location, uh, we decided to do a quick impromptu interview with Courtney Hall. And this is what today's video is going to be about. If you happen to have missed out on that previous video where I show you how to sign 17 different uh, zoo animals, you can get to it right now by clicking the car in the corner. So let's go ahead and take a look at that interview, but please stick around until after it's finished because afterwards I'm gonna tell you three of my takeaways from that interview that is really helpful for those that are just beginning to learn sign language or those that may be struggling with learning sign language right now. So let's go ahead and check it out. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gorgeous, I'm with ASL Basics and we're taking a trip to the Chaffee Fresno Zoo and I met Courtney Hall uh, who works here and she also knows a little bit of sign language so I figured we'd uh, introduce her and ask her a few questions about learning sign language. So Courtney, Hi. how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Good, good. So how long have you been working here at the zoo? I've been working here almost four years now. Wow, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned that you learned some sign language too, I huh? I did, yes. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell me about the process of learning sign language? So, I discovered a few years ago that, um, especially working here at the zoo, I noticed that there are a lot of people that speak a lot of different kind of languages, mm -hmm. like um, mm -hmm. Spanish or Hmong or things like that, but I noticed that there wasn't a lot of people that knew sign language. And I figured, you know, since I'm working my way up to be a zookeeper, that'd be really cool to be able to have at least one or two zookeepers that work here that also do know sign language, not only for the deaf and hard of hearing community, mm -hmm. but also for um, like the autistic and everything, like nonverbal and yeah. everything kind of community as well. Um, I figured, you know, it's not a language that a lot of people know, so that it would also kind of, you know, put me ahead of the pack as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So have yeah. you found yourself using sign language so far? I do sometimes, yeah. Um, I do use it a lot with, um, I've noticed some, especially during the school semesters, there are a lot of school groups that come in, um, be it it's like a classroom of deaf children or mm. like I said, autistic children that are wow. nonverbal too. Um, and I'll use it occasionally and a lot of times when they're very happy that I know even just a little bit of sign language that I can like even just have a small conversation or tell them where to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. Since you work here at the zoo, mm -hmm. do you have any favorite uh, animal signs? <laughs> I have a couple, yeah. Um, I do like tiger. Um, not only are tigers my favorite animal, it's just kind of a cool thing to do, and I also mm -hmm. like lion. Very cool, yeah. <laughs> uh, probably one of my favorites would be elephant, just for the trick Oh yeah, of the elephant, elephant, yeah, that one's cool too. Hippo, I think, is kind of a cool one for yeah, this hippo. big tusk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so have you found it, learning the language challenging sometimes? Occasionally, especially um, since we live in such a world where it's so necessary to constantly be speaking and especially in the job that I have where I'm constantly talking to people all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little bit difficult to try to learn it and kind of switch back and forth sometimes um, between you know signing and speaking especially if I've just talked to somebody that I signed with and then turning back around and having to speak it is a little bit confusing yeah. um, also sometimes I've noticed that um, it's a little bit hard because there aren't a lot of direct signs so like there aren't a lot of things that directly go over into sign language so it's a little yeah. hard trying to learn the new syntax and everything like that with ASL. That's a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found that to be true too, especially yeah. when you're just beginning to learn the language. Mm -hmm. Of course, like as you're learning the language, you come across like challenging moments or mm -hmm. maybe you're feeling discouraged. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that in the past and if, and if so, like what have you done to get past that? A little bit. Um, I found that I know quite a few people even just here that know a little bit and I've just known that like oh, I'm feeling a little bit discouraged I'll just go practice with somebody I know that I feel comfortable signing with and then they can tell me like oh you're signing it wrong or hey you're actually signing pretty well today um, or something like that because I know it is yeah. a little bit challenging especially because you're you get so nervous trying to sign with somebody <laughs> and so it's really I found it's a good thing to help that helps a little bit to just kind of practice with somebody I'm comfortable with. Yeah, that's something that I've definitely found is just using the language that even if you don't know a whole lot, just mm -hmm. forcing yourself and coming forward and just yeah. using what you know 
really kind of makes that uh, progress a yeah, little bit it easier. Helps a little bit. Would you have any advice for those that are just getting started learning the language? Um, yeah, the best advice I'd give is to try not to get too discouraged. It is going to be a little bit challenging at first, especially when you learn when you get to that point of you're in class and you know the interpreter leaves or mm. you're trying to have a conversation with your teacher and something just isn't going through. Um, don't be discouraged. If you have to write it out, write it out. Um, if you have to try to fingerspell, just try to fingerspell and then just practice. Lots of practice. Yeah, that's great advice. <laughs> it was really nice meeting you, Courtney. Yeah, nice meeting you as well. I hope you really enjoyed that interview, and there was a lot of good information in there. So right now I'm going to give you my three main takeaways from that interview for those that are either beginning to learn sign language or those that might be struggling with it. Number one, practice. So in the beginning of learning a language, it can be a lot of fun. You're learning a lot of new words, a lot of new vocabulary, and it can be really exciting. But don't forget to practice what you've already learned so far. And you know that saying, if you don't use it, you lose it? It is so true. And for Courtney, she mentioned that when things started to get a little discouraging while she was learning the language, finding people to practice with really made a difference. And that's something I myself can relate to as well, and I'm sure anyone that has tried to learn a foreign language. As nice as it would be to just learn a sign once and remember it forever, oftentimes that's not the case. Many times we end up having to relearn that word again and again and use it over and over again and then until eventually it sticks. So if you find yourself struggling with uh, trying to remember words or signs that you've learned in the past, don't be hard on yourself. That is perfectly normal. It happens to everybody. And if that happens to you in the middle of a conversation, you can take Courtney's advice and just do whatever it takes to get that point across. Uh, she suggested, you know, finding something to write with or fingerspelling the word that you're trying to sign. However, you might even have to go further. Uh, the person that you're trying to sign to might not know English or might not know the word that you're trying to convey. So in that case, you may just have to do your best in trying to act out what it is that you're wanting to tell them. Understand that most people are actually really patient and they want to make that communication happen. So one of my favorite sayings is, when in doubt, act it out. And if you found that experience painful or awkward, it would be a good thing. For one, it shows us what we need to work on. But secondly, making those kinds of mistakes and feeling that pain really helps us learn faster. In fact, our brain makes more synaptic connections when we make a mistake compared to if we just got it right the first time. Number two is push through discouragement. Anyone that has learned another language can attest to uh, feeling discouraged at one point or another. Whether it's not being able to communicate as well as we would like to, or uh, comparing ourselves with others and, and thinking that they're making so much more progress than I am, or maybe we're just getting tired of making embarrassing mistakes. Trust me, it happens. Just keep reminding yourself that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Even with children, with their constant exposure to language, um, them trying to practice it every day, them asking questions and not being afraid of looking silly or being embarrassed, it takes them several years to develop that language. So if you're feeling discouraged, remember that learning language is not a short process and just keep in mind that you are making progress. And it may even help to take a few lessons from children's. Ask yourself, am I exposing myself to the language that I'm trying to learn on a daily basis? Am I practicing what I've learned so far? Am I asking questions? Am I letting embarrassment prevent me from using and practicing what I've learned so far? So sometimes we just need to take a step back and remember that we're going to be learning a language as a child. Don't be embarrassed that you have the vocabulary of a child because this is just the process of learning a language. And just remember that consistency is key when learning a new language. For Courtney, the way she pushed through her discouragement was that she found some support. She found somebody to practice with and she found somebody that could provide her feedback. And really that is such a good tip for anybody that is trying to learn a language. Support is so important. And that is why I encourage you to share these videos with uh, some of your friends or some of your family to have that support and that practice and to get that feedback. It really does help getting through uh, those discouraging times. My third and final takeaway from that interview is to start with the end in mind. Now, it's easy to get discouraged or lose uh, sight of the reasons why we wanted to learn the language in the first place. 
So really pause for a second and try to remember the reason why you wanted to learn the language in the first place. And maybe like Courtney, your reason for wanting to learn sign language is to be able to reach out and communicate with a wider range of people. And for her, it proved to be really beneficial because she was in an environment where she was uh, interacting with people from all over the world. And she actually ended up using what she learned to be able to communicate with those that were deaf, with those that were hard of hearing, and even those that were nonverbal or autistic. And for those that she was able to communicate with, even if it wasn't the most articulate or it was the best conversation that they've ever had, or even if she was able to communicate everything that she wanted to, I am certain that those people were beyond appreciative that somebody else uh, went out of their way, spent the effort to learn their language and to uh, try to have a conversation with them. And just as an added bonus, uh, Courtney touched on the point that um, her learning another language uh, put her ahead of the pack, per se, of her coworkers. Um, so one of the secondary benefits of learning another language, whether it's your second or your third, it makes you more valuable for the person that you're working for, and you might actually uh, make more money uh, for knowing multiple languages. But whatever your reason is for wanting to learn sign language, just remember what that reason is when things get tough, when things get discouraging, or uh, you have a conversation and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. Because sometimes that will happen. And earlier I mentioned that uh, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Sometimes it feels like a roller coaster. Yeah, you'll, you'll have a lot of ups and you'll have a lot of downs. But overall, it's a very exciting ride and it's one worth taking. And for all of you language learners out there, just remember to practice as much as you possibly can. Push through those times of discouragement and always remember your reason why you wanted to learn the language in the first place. And if you practice and you push yourself and you remind yourself of the reasons why you're learning the language, you're gonna become successful. I hope you all enjoyed the interview from today, and I also hope that you found my three key takeaways uh, very helpful for you uh, learning the language going forward. The question of the day I have for all of you is, what's your reason for wanting to learn sign language? Please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, before I go, I just want to share one comment that I really appreciated uh, from Kirsten. She said, wow, this is just wonderful. I absolutely love meeting other passionate people, especially in the language arena. This is so unique and cool. I click the notification bell so fast, I am all about learning. But for now, I just wanted to let you know that I really do appreciate these comments, and I love hearing from all of you. Next week, I will be teaching you all the days of the week, and the week after that, I have something really special planned. So hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you don't miss out. And in the meantime, uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram. There I'll teach you a sign every single day. And remember that consistency is really key to learning the language. If there is anything specific that you would like to learn how to sign, uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram, and I can be sure to include that in a future post or video. If you've made it all the way to the end, give yourself a pat on the back. I know today was a long one, but until next time, I'll see you later.